right, here we have the body gripping traps, also known as the conibear trap. Uh, they're arguably the, one of the most effective and common traps used when trapping for beaver. Um, the first one here we have is, is easily the most common size. It's known as the conibear 330. Um, also next to it, I've got what's known as the super bear. You can see it's it's a lot wider frame trap. Uh, it's also got a, its place and in, in uses it in the in the beaver trapping field. Um, we'll go back here and talk a little bit about the anatomy of a conibear trap. Um, first off, we have the chain um, and loop that's used to stake the trap down to where it's still in place when you come back to check it the next morning. Um, moving on, we've got the springs. There's two on each side of the conibear trap. Um, they're what gives the trap the ability to fire. There's a lot of power in these springs. They're very stout. Also, on each spring, you have a safety latch. These are very important. Um, at the beginning when setting the trap, making sure that they are on the springs and also they're the very last thing that you take off before leaving the trap set. Um, next up we'll talk about the trigger. Um, this is what the beaver actually has to come through, hit the trigger, and when the trap is set up, the trigger will be associated with the dog here. This dog will trip, the springs will compress, and the beaver will be folded um, right up in between the frame of the conibear trap. It's a very ethical, very effective trap that a lot of beaver trappers find very useful. We've got a good spot right here where the beavers are coming under the road into the upper end of this pond and using a really good run right here. This is a, this is a good example of a, of a prime spot to set a, set a kind of bear right in the middle of a run. Um, for today's set, because I've got a wider choke down point here, I'm gonna go ahead and use our larger, wider gap, super bear, uh, kind of bear, kill on contact trap. Um, it's already set up like we've showed you. Springs are compressed, safeties are on each spring, and I've got my kind of bear safety on the top of it as a, as a third safety uh, component. To start off with, we'll go ahead and get our kind of bear seated in the middle of the room. You can see how large this kind of bear is. It takes up a good portion of the run in this section of the, of the upper part of the pond here. I've got good stabilized banks on both sides. The arms can be straight out for this set. It's going to work out really good. I will set this kind of air to the bottom of the run, not sunk too far in the mud to where the jaws can't compress quickly once the trigger is released, once the beaver steps through it. One of the first things I do after getting it set is immediately stake it in. I've got a long water stake here, the 30 inch stake, T handle, because I've got a lot of sediment underneath me. This is really soft bottom. If you don't have a long stake, if you opt for a shorter, shorter stake, there's a fine chance that you has got to flop out, uh, flop the trap out of the, out of the uh, run here, and you'll have to look for it wherever it ends up. So if I keep it staked, that's going to help me to come back find the beaver right where he was caught. And that's, that's sufficient there. We can get it covered up a little bit with mud just to where the beaver doesn't notice that. Next thing to do, the, the trap's already fairly secure just the way it's seated. Um, all I've got to do is go ahead and stake down within the coils of each trap to stabilize it. The beaver doesn't like a lot of wobble in the kind of trap when it hits it. The more in place, the more stable it is. The better chance you have of him continuing to walk on through it rather than turn around and hit the other way. I've got a little bit of an opening here. We've got an older, wiser beaver. They don't like the shape of this kind of bear in this run. They may want to skirt it to the side. So as I'm stabilizing my kind of bear, I might use a little bit of uh, stabilization stakes, kind of some fencing on the outside to deter them from skirting around it, which is what I'm gonna do with this longer, longer stake right here. That'll kind of deter them from coming along. It's a pretty stabilized trap. I've got another extra stake here, and these are just what we found on site. It doesn't take much, they're, they're lazy animals, they don't want to walk any farther than they have to, just like you or I. Another stake right there should do it. You've already got a good natural border on this side. It should work out well. We've also got some grass here, convenient enough. We can take some of this grass to help to break up the 
the outline of the springs, and also the trap, the top brace of the trap itself. So that trap is pretty well secured. Now the last thing you'll want to do is flip off. Otherwise, you'll come back and no matter what the beaters are doing, you'll not have the trap set on. The last step I do before I walk away from the trap set is take off my third uh, safety there on top of that kind of there. Nice and easy. Now this way, once that beaver comes through here in this run, he's got basically no choice but to stay in the water. If he wants to keep on walking through here, and hopefully he'll walk through that super bear kind of bear set right in the middle of this beaver. Okay, we got a good example of a place to set a common bear here. This is a beaver den inside of the bank here in the southeast where it stays warm most of the year. Beavers, a lot of times, do not use the great big lodges. They'll burrow a hole right here in the bank. And this is a really good spot to set a common bear because you know that they're going to be going in and out of here. Um, this is freshly used. The bottom of this pond, before I muddied it all up, it was clean, uh, and it was really lightly colored where they've been sliding in and out of here. There's also freshly cut sticks all around here, another sign that uh, beavers have been using this area. Before we came down to the pond, we went ahead and we set our conifer. And you can see, latches are on both springs and the safety is on top. Now when you set this conifer inside of this burrow, you want it set up so that the beaver is forced to go through the conifer. You don't want to leave any gap so that he can go around it. And you can see because of the size of this, the way this is set up right now, there's already a gap on top. It's resting on the bottom of the pond, but there's still a gap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some rocks and place them below the conifer. See, doing that raises the conifer up and it gets rid of the gap that is on top. This is pretty soft bottom here, so we're going to use a long, a long stake to stake this in. some sticks to keep this in place and fence off. See we got that nice and sturdy. <laughs> to make this most effective, pull some grass around to be able to cover up that conifer so it's camouflaged from the beach. Last thing that we're going to do is we're going to pull off our safeties very carefully. I'm doing the latches on the side first and the very last safety is the one on top. Now I'm taking the safety off top. Now we have a live set trap. Exited it and we'll come check tomorrow and hopefully we'll have a view.